Hello, everybody, Prince of the Bear here, and we're back in Magic Kingdom. I know, it's a little bit rare, and no, we're not here for Mickey's Not So Scary Christmas Party. We're not doing that. Not this Christmas year. party. Not so scary Christmas party? Not so scary Christmas party. Yeah, that's not what I'm so scary Christmas, Christmas, Christmas party. Okay, I, I guess we're not going I'm, I'm to either one. No. Oh, we might go to Christmas party. I don't know. Possibly. This one. Not so scary Halloween party. Uh, there's just no vegan options this year, but there's still Skipper Canteen, which you rave about. So it's time to return. Be sure to have a wild time and subscribe. You heard the drop. I love the table setting. There's a lot of vegan wines available here at Jungle Skipper Canteen, and I actually had a different wine picked out for us to try, but Bear and I have this weakness for South African wines ever since we went to Jiku, We've done wine tastings at Jiku. Jiku introduced us to um, Painted Wolf, which is like my ultimate bay wine, so South African wine is a very special near and dear place in our hearts. So once I saw the South African shakalaka, oh, I say shakalaka, but that's like a, a dish. I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong. You guys will flame me in the comments, it's fine. So we got this beautiful red wine that is South African, and I'm excited for it. It's got this beautiful tartness that's just coming from the plum. The plum is so prominent in this wine. I absolutely love every sip, and I know that Bear and I are going to be fighting over, like, who gets more. This is a four and a half out of five grapes for me. I want to get this every single time that we come here. I guess it already goes without saying, even before I try it, because we know that what I say about food and drink around here doesn't matter at all. If any of our Orlando local community finds this, can you let me know? Like, she's going to ask this wine a lot. I need a price, I need a location. Before that, I need a location. So help me help the princess. Mm. I'm getting like cherry notes in the very front. I, mean, I don't really like cherry, but like that is a nice like textured line. It's like dry, but not like lip puckering so. And it's got a nice like, sort of like alcoholic acidic burn at the end. I can drink that. Um, it's not as smooth as I would say Pink Wolf, but as far as South African wines go, like the, the Pintages that we tried, it's pretty good. I'm going to sell it 4 and 5 plus. We have this beautiful carrot soup. It was replaced by our garbanzo bean soup that we had the last time that we were here. I love that soup. Cheers to a carrot soup with a coconut cream base. Oh yeah. And then you've got like a nice garam masala to it. You can really taste the, the fresh carrotness to it. I'm actually super into this. I want to make this at home. This is amazing. So four and a half out of five soups. I still like the garbanzo bean soup a little bit more, but this is like a fair number two. Good replacement. It's very interesting that Princess would like this. It is a coconut cream based carrot soup and she does not like coconut. Even though when I've tried to mix coconut cream into things in the house, I have not agreed with her. Any hint of coconut, and she's usually ready to swim for safety. Uh, but I am actually glad she'd like this. Maybe we do need to make carrot soup at home. We like a good soup. Probably too much. At the wrong times of year. Sure. Our fall's coming up, she's gonna want some more soup. So, let me try. Mmm. It tastes like a dull carrot baby food. I'm a bad one, don't get me wrong. I like baby food. Wait, what? That came out wrong. Either way. That's a good soup. It's not just straight liquid. It's got some viscosity to it, sort of thick. It goes down smooth. 
You got the carrot, but it mixes well with the other flavors. I kind of wish it was a little spicy. It's not spicy in the least. But it's got a nice cream and texture to it. I mean, soup, three and a half out of five claws. I think as far as a plant-based appetizer, if they have it, get it. You will not regret it. Good soup. So, I am pretty famished for bear today. So I decided I was gonna go with a appetizer. I don't usually get appetizers, but I decided to get something today. Uh, fried rice may seem kind of basic, but it looked kind of good. It, it spoke to me. Shrimp, peas, egg. Uh, this is a really small, what I would consider a fried rice dish, but for an appetizer, I think it works. You get a ton of shrimp, huge shrimp, and a nice bed of rice. Let's go ahead and go in here. Got little pieces of pork in here as well. Nice forkful. It's nice and butamous. Nice full fork. Down the hatch. Mmm. It's a nice like grilled shrimp, perfectly cooked. Got a little bit of spice to it. And what tastes like a spicy teriyaki sauce. With the peas and the rice, perfectly cooked. Um, I know appetizers are supposed to appetize. This makes you more hungry, but in a good way. Give it three and a half out of five bucks. Probably should have asked for chopsticks on this one. I'm really excited because the last three videos that we've done here at um, Jungle Skipper Canteen, I've been able to get the curry, which um, they still have on the menu, and then the Thai Perkins noodles, which they no longer have on the menu. But you can still ask, from what I've heard, um, for that dish. Now, this is a new, new dish that you can modify. These are the Dan Dan noodles, which typically come with pork, but you can ask for tofu, and it is vegan. So we have this beautiful little, like, stack of nudes here. And they're supposed to be spicy, so we'll see how spicy they are. And then I'm gonna have it with, like, a piece of the tofu, because tofu is my jam. I'm really excited for this. Like, I'm excited to try something new outside of, like, carrot soup, you know? Wow. So it's like a nice little sweetness in the front, and then you get a heat in the back. It just kind of gives you like a nice, slow, long burn, but it's a low burn. I would say it's like, it starts at like maybe a six out of 10 on the heat scale, and then it very quickly comes down to a four. And now here I'm at like a two, but it definitely has like a nice kick to it. So if you don't like spicy, don't order this. But if you do, you might want to ask for extra sauce. It's very delicious, and I, I think that I actually like this more than the Thai Perkins noodles or the curry. Yeah, like this is my new favorite um, Skipper Canteen dish. I'm gonna give it a 4.75 out of 5. Dan Dan. It's making me say Dan. Dan. And I'm kind of excited to see uh, what Bear thinks of it, considering that he had Dan Dan noodles recently at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. Let's see how it compares and tastes. So nice Dan Dan noodles, a huge pile of nudes, and we do love nudes on this channel. Get your minds out of the gutter. Actual noodles. Oh, with this tofu in here, you got some shaved radish in here. Some other greens sort of like give it a little bit more color because otherwise it would just be a lot of brown. And while I'm fine with brown, some of you may not be. Take it as you will. Uh, so we're gonna take a little bit of the nudes. We're gonna take a little bit of the tofu here. Ooh, they can cook tofu. I like the color of that. It's way more nudes than I need. We're eating it anyway. Mm. Now I say, there's too many nudes. 
But that initial flavor explosion is so good. I wish you'd take me even bigger for it. And not to the Princess City. Um, they say spicy. They're not kidding. Um, for me, given that I'm a spice head, it's maybe like a 5 out of 10 on a spice scale, but it creeps. So you get nothing in the beginning and it sort of grows towards the back of your throat. So, I agree with the Princess. In terms of the spice, you might want to be a little bit careful. I wish they offered an extra spice. This is like a point or two spicier. I'd feel some real regret in not ordering the carnivore version of these noodles. Um, this is quite delicious. I'm always really surprised at how good Super Canteen food is, given where it sits. Yes, that's Magic Kingdom shade, uh, but Magic Kingdom just set their food game up. This is a solid four and a half out of five plus. I can eat this with the tofu and not feel like I'm missing anything. Carnivores, it's worth a shot. Want a light lunch at Magic Kingdom? Light dinner? This is it. This is a second coming of a sustainable fish here at uh, Skipper Canteen. Uh, previously at the Skipper Canteen, it was one of the first fish I ever named on this channel with a face. His name was Bob. A moment of silence for Bob. No teeth, no eyes this time. It's just a nice fillet of fish, skin on, and a little bit of broth. Got some carrots and some bok choy in here. Uh, they gave me a soup spoon. So assuming they mean you to eat the fish with some of the broth. And the fish itself. You do have a knife. Don't need it. <laughs> it's absolutely blackened. It just tears apart very, very easily. You don't need the knife. Just get a little bit of the broth going. I'm going to go ahead and load this up with a little bit of the broth and the fish because apparently that's how they meant for me to eat it. I'm very curious about this. The, the skin looks amazing. The seasoning's all on top. I'm going to throw a rub to it. It smells terrible. To who? To vegans. I think the issue is getting to the I only know one of those. I'm sorry. Maybe two. I want to say we have now, so I've always said with noodle dishes or ramen, if the broth is trash, food is trash. This isn't ramen. This is udon. It's not a noodle bowl, but this broth got some seasoning and flavor to it. The uh, fish actually has a little bit of heat to it. Uh, not like heat is in the spice, but there's enough seasoning on it where it's giving you like a little taste explosion in your mouth, and the broth is a little bit to complement it and then calm that heat down. Uh, it's some good fish. I'm incredibly impressed. That's a total four out of five pause. This is infinitely better than basically anything I've ever had at BR Guest. Mm. And I know some of you love BR Guest. I've never been in love with it. It's very hit and miss. We've had some good things there, but we've had some very bad things there. This is a very good thing at a cheaper price. With a better location, with better theming, I'd say. Yes, I would say better theming than BR Guest. Fight me on that one. I know none of us are going to be on that one, but this is a solid four to five fish. Very satisfying. I'm sitting over here struggling, being Persian, taking my time, drinking my wine, eating my food, and Bear's just done. He's just like, what food? What food? It's gone. It's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. Can I do a picture water? Yeah, of course. Oops, I did it again. I tried to resist her noodles, I really did, but they were just too good. That's my leftovers. They were left over in my stomach. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Mouth's on fire, though. That's my punishment. Skipper Canteen continues to be what I consider to be the best table service restaurant in all of Magic Kingdom. I think I agree with Easily. you. Easily. I agree with you. Better than BR Guess. Better and value CRT. than CRT. Easily better than any of the quick services that exist in this park. If you haven't been to Skipper Canteen, 
I need to understand why in the comments. If you are an adventurous eater, go to Skipper Canteen. If you want meat, potatoes, burgers, and frites, go anywhere else. Just don't go to, don't go to Cosmic Race. This is still a Cosmic Race slander channel. I don't care how mad you get. I mean, it's not Catal. It's not Catal. But. If there's anywhere else you can see us go, of course, the comments can place to let us know. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, Bear is going to skip out of Magic Kingdom and never come back. You heard the girl. <laughs>